a little bit more about our our engagement and uh, with not cutting. So thank you. Thanks, Mark. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Mark said, sorry we're not able to be there in person with you and enjoy some buddies barbecue. But uh, and can everyone hear okay and, and see everything? Yep. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So we, we're just going to give you a kind of a general overview of the engagement. Jeremy, if you'll go to the next slide. We've been under contract to, uh, to the county now since November of 2019, so a year and a half of working with uh, Mayor Jacobs and his team, and I would say it's, it's been uh, it's been uh, excellent. Uh, the mayor and his team are, are very very good to work with. Uh, we we are in regular communication with them. In regular, I mean you know every week, and certainly during the session and. and with the with the baseball legislation this year you know almost on a, on a daily basis but he's been great to work with chris caldwell uh his finance director and, and dwight van debate uh, generally that's who we're we're working with and, and and they've all been uh they've been very good to work with you know, typically well you know of course the last year a lot of the meetings have been have been virtual we've, we've certainly had some in-person meetings but, but typically we'll be over in Knoxville a few times a year to meet with them and, and they'll be here in Nashville for meetings and it gives us a, the opportunity to, to meet and strategize with them uh, you know throughout the year but especially before the, the budget season kicks off and of course the legislative session we're meeting with the mayor and his team to, to understand their priorities um, get a sense of, of what's what's more important of all the things they'd like to accomplish you know what's going to number one on the list number two number three where are we going to dedicate time and resources on, on their behalf and, and working uh, with them uh, jointly you know, we'll we'll huddle up sometime after the legislative session kind of a debrief on how things went and, and get a sense of you know what what pro what what things are important that you know maybe we didn't get as far along as we would have liked and, and we're going to be moving those uh, more towards the top of the list for for the next uh, next budget cycle and next legislative session um, as i noted we're in regular communication during the legislative uh, season uh, during the session we've got a standing weekly meeting with them the the go through bill review you know, focus on things that we know are of specific uh, uh, interest and, um, and and just make sure that we've got a very uh, uh, high level of communication and um, and just it's, it's, bills are working with their way through the process we understand what uh, what their needs are um, some cases there's been joint work with the city and the county that's been particularly pronounced this year with uh, the uh, sales tax special sales tax uh, allocation for the, uh, for the baseball stadium and, and uh, which we which we and, and they and I know the, the commission who's, who's very supportive has been very supportive is a it's really a transformational economic development project for, for the city and the county uh, so it's been a lot of uh, joint meetings, joint discussions, and making sure that both the city and the county were on the on the same page and, and, and pulling in the same direction. And I think the effort's been very collaborative, very productive, and, and certainly the, the commission's support of that of that uh, endeavor has been uh, has been very very important to it as well. Um, at times we're liaising with other organizations like the. Uh, Tennessee County Services Association, you know, on, on issues that impact uh, you know, most local governments across the state, issues that, that might be a little bit uh, bigger than just one county trying to, to uh, advance the, the mission where you need to collaborate and, and, and have the, the collective leverage of, uh, of multiple stakeholders. So, you know, at times we'll be liaising with those organizations so we make sure what Knox County's priorities are in that discussion are, are, are understood. We're providing regular updates. Um, some of those are, are, you know, every week, some of those are ad hoc. So, you know, when an executive order, we, you know, this last year with the pandemic, a number of executive orders, as you know, 
we're regularly, have been regularly updating the mayor and his team uh, in real time as those orders have been coming out. Uh, and then finally, you know, trying to help message these priorities and distill the message down to, to, uh, to a, a single page so the, it's clear and, and, uh, and on point. Can we go to the next slide, Jerry. So as Mark uh, you know, was going through the, an overview of the executive branch and the legislative branch, you know, we're engaging uh, with, with both on behalf of, of the county on a number of different issues, uh, everything from you know, the uh, need for additional psychiatric funding and, and psychiatric <coughs> resources. Uh, we work closely with the mayor on the Instruction Trades Academy. Uh, initiative and how the state could help support and fund that initiative. With baseball, we, we talked about criminal justice reform is, is something that, that uh, has been a part of those discussions as well. Uh, with COVID funding, uh, interfacing with the Department of Transportation on different issues. So, you know, meetings with the governor's team and different agencies uh, based on what the what the topic is and what the need is and that's that's uh and then of course the, the governor's proposed budget and, and the, the funding priorities that, that the mayor and his team have set in terms of the, the legislative branch you know we're there every day during session meeting with members on specific pieces of legislation in fort Hood county attending committee meetings monitoring those meetings and you know the mayor has been here um, know, two, at least two or three times since we started the engagement. You know, we'll have a scheduled meetings with legislators this year. You know the emphasis on the funding for the baseball stadium, meeting with with members, not just the delegation, but but members uh, both in the Senate and the House to discuss uh, those priorities and those issues. So it's. Um, I would say the work is is it's, it's constant. We're we're locked in and and, uh, and very uh, very engaged. So let me turn it over to Chris Cobble and our team now to talk about some specific pieces of legislation or or provide a little bit more information on some of the things that uh, I've already noted. Sure. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, appreciate appreciate the opportunity. Um, and Jeremy, we can go to the next slide and I'll get into uh, the specific pieces uh, of legislation and the current status. Um, the first bill, Senate Bill 783, House Bill 1204, has been alluded to uh, multiple times. This is the uh, uh, apportionment and distribution of tax revenue associated with the new minor league baseball stadium. Uh, this week it passed out of House Finance Subcommittee uh, and is, will be uh, and passed out of the Senate Finance Committee. Uh, it'll be uh, on the Senate floor taken up sometime uh, likely next week uh, and is scheduled for the House Finance Full Committee on the 26th. Uh, the amended agreement uh, was funded, as you all are aware, in the administration's budget amendment to the tune of $13.5 million. Senate Bill 113, House Bill 199, uh, this is uh, relative to stormwater management. Uh, this bill would uh, require the abatement of fees uh, owned by uh, of uh, for property owners of nonprofits to build retention ponds. Uh, so whatever the cost of the attention, uh, retention pond, uh, the county would have to abate those fees up to those costs, uh, up to that cost. This would, uh, according to the fiscal note, decrease local revenue in excess of $400,000, or excuse me, $40,000 annually. Uh, this was deferred to summer study uh, in the house and will be looked at closer over the summer. Uh, the original bill as filed uh, applied to any entity uh, that was re uh, required to build a retention pond, uh, obviously a much broader impact and a much larger fiscal impact uh, to local governments. Um, so that'll be an issue that uh, we'll uh, need to keep a, a pulse on uh, throughout the summer. Senate Bill 987, House Bill 1299 by Senator Gardenhire and Representative Jernigan. Uh, this allows municipalities to le levy and collect uh, tax upon incomes derived from stocks and bonds. Uh, as I think of this as essentially as a local option called income tax. Uh, it was general subbed in the Senate uh, and never taken up in finance subcommittee in the House. Um, 
the fiscal note, uh, it assumes that if all municipalities uh, increase uh, or impose this tax, um, it would uh, increase uh, local government revenue in excess of $42.9 million annually. Uh, not a lot of discussion on that this year, uh, but it is uh, noteworthy and interesting uh, that that bill was filed. Senate Bill 160, House Bill 192. Uh, this bill reduces the state administration fee on local auction sales tax uh, from 1.25% to 0.5% uh, that revenue uh, collects and remits uh, that tax. I, I know the County Commission has been supportive of that legislation in the past. Um, it has a positive fiscal uh, impact uh, to cities and counties, uh, roughly $20 million. It was uh, placed behind the budget in the House Finance Subcommittee a few weeks back uh, and is scheduled, uh, has advanced through the Standing Committee in the Senate and is scheduled for a Senate finance vote uh, on the 27th. Uh, that is on the behind the budget calendar uh, as well. Uh, next slide relative to education. The first one, this is the BEP hold harmless legislation uh, that I know uh, 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 you all are interested in. Uh, it is uh, scheduled, uh, it is uh, passed through the Finance Committee in the House and will be scheduled for a Senate uh, floor vote at some point in the coming weeks uh, and is scheduled for the House floor on 428 uh, of next week. Uh, it is an increase in expenditures. The state is anticipating an increase in expenditures to be roughly $8.9 million in one-time funding. So it's just uh, held harmless for one fiscal year. Uh, relative to property and codes, um, Senate Bill 1604, House Bill 366 by Bailey and Williams. Uh, this bill would limit the government's ability to require a right-of-way designation as a condition of approval to any application made by the local government. Uh, this was uh, 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 of interest uh, to us, uh, ensuring that local government had the ability uh, uh, to require those rights-of-way de dedications when they're necessary. It was sent, uh, it's going to be studied by TASSER uh, over the summer to look at the appropriate way to handle those uh, 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 in the future. And so will not become law, but uh, again, something else that we'll need to uh, keep a pulse on and work on over the summer. Senate Bill 631, House Bill 749. Um, this uh, bill uh, uh, is with regards to local government limitation on construction materials. Uh, specifically says that uh, local governments could not discriminate against uh, or favor particular construction materials or techniques techniques that have already been approved by the state fire, fire marshal. Uh, this bill has already passed uh, both House and Senate and sent to the speakers for their signature uh, and it had a not significant fiscal impact uh, to the state or uh, local government. Uh, relative to the administration, uh, this is uh, uh, the county commission uh, bill that allows the participation of meetings by electronic means um, this is uh, what's kind of interesting. It uh, uh, failed in finance subcommittee this week, but has uh, since been put back on notice in finance sub for uh, the 28th of next week. Uh, so one of two things happened there. Um, either Representative Wright uh, was uh, able to get enough signatures for the committee to uh, reconsider their actions and put that back on notice, uh, or there's uh, a clerical, clerical mistake. Um, as far as the fiscal impact, uh, it's uh, due to uh, multiple unknown factors. Um, a, a fiscal impact could not be reasonably determined in that piece of legislation. That's why I uh, had to go before the Finance Committee. Um, the next two bills, uh, Senate Bill 858, House Bill 575. Uh, this bill uh, by Senator Bowling and Representative Reagan uh, uh, does three things primarily. Number one, makes county boards of health uh, advisory in nature. Uh, number two, puts a definition, a standard definition um, of quarantine in statute. And thirdly, uh, prohibits governments uh, from requiring private business to use uh, what's commonly been referred to as vaccine passports. Uh, this bill passed the Senate on the 14th of this month and uh, is scheduled for a House Finance Committee vote on the 26th. Uh, there is uh, uh, no fiscal impact uh, or an unknown fiscal impact on that piece of legislation. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, Senate Bill 558, House Bill 1132. Uh, this is the Tennessee Opioid Abatement Act um, that uh, was uh, put uh, forth uh, in front of the General Assembly by the Attorney General's Office. Uh, it does three main things. Um, it creates a, a council and fund 
to address the misuse of opioids, um, uh, which is, uh, will be staffed by the Department of Mental Health. Uh, number two, it stipulates that 35% uh, of, of the awarded funds uh, goes to counties uh, uh, that have joined the settlement, and then 65% of the funding goes to the statewide opioid remediation measures. Uh, and finally, it requires annual, annual reporting um, uh, on the status of that fund uh, to various entities and state government uh, to keep a uh, pulse on. Uh, currently, over $15 million has been, uh, been awarded, uh, but the pr uh, uh, precise amount of any additional awards is still unknown. So I think that, is, that kind of concludes what we have prepared and we're uh, open to any questions or comments that anybody has.